Port Antonio, Portland. Controversial leader of the Accompanying Maroons, Colonel Richard Curry, has rejected claims that he is behind a push to have Colonel Wallace Sterling replaced by an 18-year-old girl as leader of the Moortown Maroons. The nasty power struggle has seen death threats being reported to the Portland police who are focused on making sure no one is hurt during the vote planned on May 8th. On Thursday, Wallace was Thursday, Wallace was adamant that an election would not take place on Sunday as the council he leads did not approve the move. For one colonel to leave from his community to come into another to decide who should be colonel, this is wrong, downright rude, out of order, impertinent, and that nonsense will not stand, said a livid Wallace. We are not having an election. No election was called. There is none. Curry, don't run more town. So he and the persons in more town or setting date for an election, we are not having an election. They have proposed the 8th of May, but we have, but we not having any. The council don't call an election. Curry agreed that he has no authority to call an election, but said he was well within his right to throw his support behind a candidate he deems suitable. Let's make it clear. I have no authority in calling an election in no other territory or district than the one I'm in. If there is an election being called, it depends on the people through their council and their members who make a challenge. That's the position I understand. There is, n there is a constitution which speaks to how we elect and select. It is our, it's our democratic process. I have absolutely no say in the process, he said. I feel it's a challenge that has been put forward. I'm merely an observer giving my support where I can, and that's it, he added. Curry's support for the challenger, Lamora Dillon, is no secret in a WhatsApp message. He's listed among her supporters, which are also said to include singer Mark Bojo Bantan, Mary, and other influential individuals and groups within the Maroon community. Curry and Myrie are among people named in a report which was made to the police. Our main focus is that the incumbent has indicated that he feels threatened in some way from persons associated with the colonel of the Kampong Maroon community, Colonel Curry, and he has also indicated that Mark Myrie Bujibantan was also in the Moortown space and there is some amount of fear for the safety of Colonel Sterling. Superintendent of Police in charge of Portland Division, Kenneth Chin, said at a media briefing on Thursday. So I'm going to comment on the news report that I just read. That news report is courtesy of the Jamaica Observer. So there is a lot going on in Portland. So we're now um, getting some news that there is a push to or an alleged push, I should say, to um, get rid of the current um, Moortown um, Maroon leader, Colonel Wallace, who has been there for about 30 years. And there is a push allegedly um, by Colonel Richard Curry of a Kong Pong town um, to get um, Colonel Wallace Sterling out and have him replaced with an 18 year old girl as a leader of the Maroons. Her name is Lamora Dillon. So all of this is alleged. Um, however, it has been uh, reported by Colonel Wallace Sterling to the um, Portland police that he has been threatened. So someone has left a, a threatening message on his um, phone. So, and they're pushing to have some type of event on May the 8th. So there's some type of entertainment event also, and they're looking to have an election. So on May the 8th, 
uh, there is going to be some type of election. But um, the Colonel of um, Maroon Town, of Morton Maroon, um, of the Morton Maroon, um, Colonel Wallace, is saying that he has no knowledge of any such um, election and there's no permission to host any event, um, whether from him. And of course, the police is saying that they have not had any request or any application for an event to be hosted in Mar in Moortown, right? So there's a lot going on down here. And um, it's saying that it's also reported allegedly that entertainer, um, it, it's also reported that it's alleged that um, Boja Banton, Mark Myrie, that's his um, legal name, is also supporting Colonel Richard Curry in this um, in this push to get rid of Colonel Wallace Sterling from the Moortown Maroons. So there's a bit of a power struggle going on here, right? And I'm not. I this is the first time I'm seeing this. The, it, the report said it's um it was on what there was a WhatsApp message, and it's on social media. It's um to some extent. Um, this is very surprising if it's true, right? I think they should go through the proper channels um, to call election if they need an election. Only if the people of Moortown needs an election, then it should be called. Otherwise, it cannot be a, a haphazard event um, to oust one leader uh, and to put in another person in his position, right? Regardless of the fact that he's been there for 30 years, right? If it's true. And no other Maroon leader should be coming from another community to, you know, to engage in anything like this, right? Whether to call um, an election or host an event, which he did not speak to the current uh, Maroon leader about. Um, this is not what we want to see, right? I don't think other people in the Maroon community would like this as well. And also in Jamaica, right? Okay, so this is this is surprising if this is all true. And we know that Colonel Wallace Sterling and Richard Curry of Akongpong has not been getting along, right? They have something... Um, going on there some a bit of a uh disagreement we're going to use the word disagreement right i guess um there was something happening in the with him and the prime minister i think it was earlier this year or late last year there were some problems or some issues where the prime minister had invited um colonel wallace sterling and another maroon leader and um did not invite um richard to the meeting and right to discuss some um, certain things and he felt left out and all that I had to contact richard but yeah this is how it went um colonel wallace sterling tried to call richard on the phone to discuss what took place and why they went and all of that and richard did not pick up the call allegedly right so this is what the colonel said in the in the um, interview when he was having on the news. And you can tell there's a bit of a bad blood brewing there. Something is not right. It's not sitting right. And it's best that they just call a meeting together. Um, that's my honest opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section and try to work it out. Right? Just call because this is not looking good. For the maroon community at all they're not used to things like this right you're supposed to um, be able to sit down a leader to leader call a meeting and discuss certain issues and get it ironed out without these things blowing up in the press and then people reporting different things right so just just to eliminate conflict and and issues going forward it's best to have dialogue right um, don't be doing things on the side, 
because that's only going to um, stir things up, especially for the people who occupy or who live in the Maroon Town areas. Um, we should always strive to have some type of um, cohesiveness. That's what they're known for. That's why they have low um, taking out rates. I don't want to say the M word. Um, they, they have that brotherhood, that cohesiveness that's missing from most of the rest of Jamaica, right? They would call it for most of the flats. Um, they can talk about things and, and, um, come to an amicable solution, right? Without engaging, um, you know, this type of, without engaging others in it and um, creating a whole, you know, negative um, atmosphere. It's not good because there are model, they, their, their behaviors and the way they do things, the way they conduct themselves, they are model behaviors for the rest of Jamaica to follow communicate the way they live together without the um, violence and all of that and taking outs and all of that, that says a lot, right? So that means they, they, they are doing something right. I mean, there's one and two, maybe one and two um, disagreements or a little upheaval here and there, but for the most part, they are, they can live together. They know how to, um, cohabitate together without uh each other without creating mayhem um, and all of this gruesomeness we don't need anything like that we need the children to see um how they resolve issues right there's no you don't go in forcefully and do things like that you sit down and you talk about it um like adults and like leaders that's just my point, right? And I respect both leaders. I do. Um, when I was growing up, I had to go up into the hills. Um, of course, um, near, maybe about five minutes from a Kong Pong town and stayed with my grandmother. So I'm very familiar with that area. Very familiar. So um, both leaders can sit down and talk about it. It, it only will do good for the communities involved in this so please let me know what you think in the comment section like share and subscribe take care of yourself and others see you on the next video bye for now